Number two, an evacuated tube uses an accelerating voltage of 40 kilovolts to accelerate electrons to hit a copper plate and produce x-rays. Non-relativistically, what would be the maximum speed of these electrons? All right, so basically we have an electron. We have some potential difference uh, between two points. So for example, pretend that we had a plate behind the electron here to the left that was, I don't know, negative, okay? and pretend that the plate over on the right is gonna be positive. There then exists some potential difference, all right, between the negative side and the positive side. What's gonna to happen to the electron? Basically, the electron's gonna be accelerated on over to the right, correct? It's repulsed by the negative, okay? I'm not sure what that was. Repulsed by the negative. It's then attracted also to the positive. So hopefully that makes sense. So now, um, what we have to do is we have to try to find out the speed, right, of this electron. Okay, the maximum speed. So if the maximum potential difference here between the two sides is going to be, as they told us, I'm going to write delta V is equal to 40 kilovolts. First of all, we know we need it in volts. So basically just convert that on into just volts and multiply that by 1,000, so it's 40,000. Okay, 40,000 volts. Now we need to be able to translate this voltage basically into a speed. And the only way to do that is through potential and kinetic energy. That being the case, I now think about, well, how is voltage con connected to potential energy or, you know, kinetic energy if I knew? And I have a formula, right? The formula is the change in voltage, where the potential difference between two points is going to be equal to the change in an object's potential energy, all then divided by the charge of that object that's moving, right? In this case, we're talking about an electron, okay? So this is the charge of an electron. So now... Basically, what I realize is I can plug in then the 40,000, okay, for the uh, voltage difference. Then the change in potential energy is what I'm actually going to solve for. And we actually do know what the charge of the electron is. What is it? I should get to probably memorize it. It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus, 10 to the minus 19th. Okay, coulombs. Let's just leave it alone like that, right? So now I realize that the change in potential energy of the electron is going to be, just take out the handy dandy calculator, 40,000 multiplied by then 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. And we get a value of about uh, 6.4, right? 6.4 times 10 to the negative 15th. And that's now in terms of joules. So what we have to assume here is that this is the maximum change in potential energy of the object. Okay. So in other words, if when the electron is not moving, like pretend you're literally, you know, holding it here, okay? Obviously, that, that electron is going to have some potential energy, right? It's going to be hard to hold the electron in this spot. As soon as you let the electron go, what's going to happen to it? It's going to want to accelerate to the right for the reasons we discussed before. So essentially what's going to happen is all that potential energy that's held up in that electron as you're holding it is going to then get converted into kinetic energy, right, as it's moving. And that's the whole idea behind this problem. Okay, so whatever the change in potential energy then of this object will be completely converted on into kinetic energy, right? So the kinetic energy then of the particle, of the electron that is, will be, when it reaches its maximum speed, 6.4 times 10 to the minus 15th joules. And we can go through all the change in energy, right? It's going to be, you know, all that, you know, final minus initial, then break it up into who cares, right? Who cares at this point? It's chapter 19, Okay. We should be able to get through that now. So what I realize now is I got to find the speed. So that's the key, right? I had to get to kinetic energy somehow. I remember then that kinetic energy is going to be equal to, remember the formula for it. Let me change the color, get a little happy blue. Kinetic energy then is going to be equal to, I've been watching a whole bunch of Bob Ross videos lately. Uh, don't really know why. So one half mv squared. God, he's so relaxing. Anyway, so in order to find velocity, what do I have to do? I have to solve this equation for v. Okay, so we manipulating everything, multiply both sides by two, divide out then the mass, and then take the square root. So we realize that it's going to be two times the kinetic energy, all then divided by the mass, take the square root of that, and that's going to be equal to the velocity. So now all I now need to do is basically just plug it on in. So two times the kinetic energy of 6.4 times 10 to the minus 15th, all divided then by the mass. The mass of what? Well, the mass of the object that's moving. And what is it? An electron. This you might have to memorize. It's 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And when we take that and plug it into the calculator, let's see what we get. 
square root of 2 multiplied by 6.4 times 10 to the minus 15th, then divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And I get a nice large value, so it's about 1.18, let's say, 1.18 times 10 to the 3, uh, hold on, i got to count this, <laughs> 3, 6, 7, 8, I think, hopefully my eyes uh, can count the spots, and that would be then in terms of meters per second, okay? How many sig figs? I don't know, who cares, right? Probably two, because that's what's given, but whatever, so it'd be 1.2 times 10 to the 8. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe, and we look forward to helping you with more problems. Be well.